Greeting wilderness enthusiasts and DIY dreamers. Got your tool belt handy? You're about to witness something extraordinary as we plunge into the heart of Siberia's untamed forests. Imagine working where your breath crystallizes before your eyes. The Siberian taiga doesn't just test tools, it tests human limits. This subarctic wonderland, with temperatures plummeting to bone-chilling extremes, demands extraordinary resilience from anyone wielding an axe or saw. The artistry of log notching rivals any fine woodworking you've ever seen. Each log becomes a puzzle piece, meticulously scribed and carved to create interlocking corners that Mother Nature provides her own insulation solutions if you know where to look. Between each lovingly placed log, Alexander and Mikhail stuff handfuls of dried moss, nature's original weather stripping. This isn't some modern green building trend, but an ancient technique passed down through countless generations of forest dwellers. Let's zoom out for a moment to appreciate the breathtaking canvas where this cabin is taking shape. You're witnessing craftsmanship unfold in the legendary Taiga Earth's Emerald Crown that stretches an almost unimaginable 12 million square kilometers across Russia's northern realms. This isn't just any forest, it's the planet's largest wooded territory. Can the battle against Siberian cold requires a multi-layered defense strategy. Our builders attack the problem from every angle, employing both ancient wisdom and modern innovation. While moss forms the first line of defense between logs, they strategically place plastic sheeting and polyester film at critical junctures where moisture might penetrate. Ever wondered why your grandparents might have saved sawdust? Watch as our builders transform this humble byproduct into winter gold, pouring it generously across the attic floor. This isn't just thrifty recycling, it's brilliant thermal engineering. Each tiny sawdust particle creates microscopic air pockets that trap heat like millions of tiny thermos bottles. The beating heart of any Siberian cabin is unquestionably its wood stove. This isn't merely an appliance, but the life-sustaining center of the entire dwelling. Installing one requires surgical precision, cut too large an opening, and you compromise the cabin's structural integrity. Too small, and you'll struggle with wood supply and proper ventilation. The positioning of this L-shaped pipe isn't just eyeballed, it's a calculated decision based on multiple factors that would make an engineer proud. Our builders are considering everything from the vertical height, which affects water pressure, to the horizontal angle, which determines how directly water hits the turbine blades. They're analyzing water source height, pipe angles, and flow rates like they're solving a complex puzzle where the prize is energy independence. Remember those pesky rock crevices we mentioned earlier? Well, now our builders are turning their full attention to these sneaky water thieves. They're like plumbers tracking down leaks, except instead of pipes, they're dealing with natural rock formations that have been channeling water their own way for centuries. Let's properly meet the remarkable men behind these capable hands. Alexander and Mikhail aren't weekend hobbyists playing at survival. They're modern-day pioneers born and raised in Russia's remote northern territories, where self-reliance isn't admirable, it's essential. United by an unwavering passion for tradition, As the cement hardens into an impenetrable barrier, it's not just stopping water from escaping, it's also creating a defense system against the environment itself. Leaves, twigs, small rocks, and all manner of natural debris are constantly on the move in flowing water, and each one is a potential saboteur to this delicate system. One small blockage could reduce water flow, or worse, completely jam the turbine mechanics.
Now, you might be wondering how this whole shebang actually works, and I don't blame you. It's a brilliantly simple yet effective system that harnesses physics principles older than civilization itself. The design consists of two key parts working together like dance partners, the vertical column, the tall part of the L, and the horizontal section, the bottom part. Together, they create a hydropower dream team that converts falling water into spinning turbines and, ultimately, electricity that can power everything from light bulbs to farm equipment. Let's geek out on the physics for a second, because it's genuinely fascinating. The vertical column is the real MVP here. It's creating what engineers call head, which is basically the height difference between where water enters the system and where it exits. The taller this column, the more dramatic the height difference, and consequently the more energy potential you've got to work with. As water drops from the top of this column, gravity accelerates it just like it would accelerate a falling apple or anything else on Earth. The techniques you're witnessing connect you directly to humanity's earliest builders. While many associate log cabins with American pioneers, this construction method actually originated millennia ago in Eastern Europe's vast forests. Alexander and Mikhail are practicing techniques largely unchanged since prehistoric times, a building tradition that spread westward with scale. Surviving in this landscape demands far more than just shelter-building skills. The remote Siberian taiga forgives no weakness and rewards only the most comprehensive preparation. Alexander and Mikhail possess an encyclopedia of wilderness knowledge that makes their continued existence possible, the ability to read subtle weather patterns that signal a Few modern humans possess the comprehensive skill set Alexander and Mikhail demonstrate so effortlessly. These aren't cherry picked abilities, but a holistic knowledge system developed through years of immersion in one of Earth's most demanding environments. Their YouTube channel offers a rare window into capabilities that were once common human knowledge, but have nearly vanished in our specialized society. After installation comes the moment of truth, testing time. All the calculations, positioning, and cementing in the world don't mean a thing until water actually flows through the system and the turbine begins to spin. This testing phase is like the opening night of a Broadway show after months of rehearsal. Exciting, nerve-wracking, and the true measure of success. Our builders watch with anticipation as water begins its journey through their carefully crafted system, cascading down the vertical column with increasing speed before shooting through the horizontal pipe and striking the turbine blades. The final and most crucial test isn't about water flow or mechanical motion, it's about the actual electricity generated. After all, that's the whole point of this ambitious project. The builders are checking if the system produces enough consistent power to meet the farm's needs, from basic lighting to running essential equipment. It's like testing if your homemade solar oven can actually bake a cake. Theory and practice finally meeting in a measurable outcome. This incredible DIY hydro project isn't just about building a power generator, it's about creating a sustainable future. Unlike traditional energy sources that belch pollution into our atmosphere and contribute to climate chaos, this water turbine produces clean, green energy that could run indefinitely as long as the stream flow. There's something deeply satisfying about creating power without creating problems, isn't there? For families living off the beaten path in remote mountain regions, reliable electricity isn't something you can take for granted. Grid connections might be non-existent, prohibitively expensive, or frustratingly unreliable. This DIY turbine system is like giving these families their own personal power plant. A declaration of energy independence that changes everything about how they live and work. One of the most beautiful aspects of this system is its economics. It's the gift that keeps on giving. After the initial investment of time, materials, and effort, the electricity this turbine generates is essentially free. There's no monthly bill, no rate increases, no surcharges or taxes. Knowledge is power, literally, in this case. By documenting and sharing their water turbine project, these innovative builders aren't just creating electricity for one farm, they're sparking a movement that could light up entire communities. Each successful installation becomes both proof of concept and instruction manual for neighbors facing similar challenges. 
Imagine the ripple effect as other families observe this working system and think we could do that too. As climate change intensifies, creating more extreme weather events and putting pressure on centralized infrastructure, resilient local solutions like this water turbine become increasingly valuable. This isn't merely a convenient alternative. In many cases, it's becoming a necessity for survival and prosperity in remote areas. Traditional power grids are vulnerable to storms, floods, and other climate-related disruptions that are becoming more frequent and severe. By contrast, a well-designed micro-hydropower system can be built to withstand local conditions and quickly repaired with available materials when damage does occur. This family isn't just adapting to current challenges, they're proactively preparing for a future where self-sufficiency may be crucial. The turbine represents a small but significant step toward creating climate-resilient communities that can maintain essential services even when larger systems fail. It's local insurance against global uncertainty. The beauty of this project extends far beyond its practical benefits. It's a powerful demonstration of what's possible when ingenuity meets necessity. This family hasn't just built a turbine, they've created a template that could be replicated in countless rural communities around the world. Their hands-on approach proves that sophisticated technology doesn't always require sophisticated facilities or expensive equipment. Sometimes the most appropriate solutions are the ones that community members can build, understand, maintain, and repair themselves.